Welcome back. In this example, we're going to take a look at finding directional derivatives using the dot product formula that we derived in our last video. Let's take a look at the example statement. So consider the elliptical paraboloid defined by the equation z equals f of xy, which is given by 1 fourth times the sum x squared plus 2 y squared close quantity, and then we add 2 to it. So this is a elliptical paraboloid that's pointing upwards. It's got a, um, a semi-axis or an x semi-axis of length 2 and a y semi-axis of length square root of 2. And the vertex of this um, elliptical paraboloid happens at the point 0, 0, 2. And that's going to be a local minimum value, actually a global minimum value, because this thing points upwards. Okay. When we look at this elliptical paraboloid, we're going to say that we'd like to find the directional derivative at a point 3, 2. So that's the endpoint x and y values. And we want to do it in two different directions. One direction is going to be defined by the unit vector u1, which is given by 1 over square root of 2, comma 1 over square root of 2. And the second direction is going to be given by the unit vector 1 half square root of 3 over 2. Here, we're asked to specifically find the directional derivative of the function f in the direction of u1 at the point 3, comma 2. And of course, this would be finding the directional derivative of the function f in the direction of unit vector u2 at the point 3, comma 2. In order to solve this problem, let's remind ourselves of the limit definition of the derivative and the theorem that comes from the limit definition of the derivative. We see in the limit definition of the directional derivative that we start with a two-variable function differential at a specific point. We start with a direction u, which is defined by a vector that has unit length. And we say that the directional derivative is the limit of the slope of a secant line Make sure when you state this limit that you know how to map that back into the slope of a secant line. The entire idea of that limit definition that you see right here is that it comes from the five-step process of creating derivatives. Make sure you can map it back to that. Next thing that we do is that we see that there is an equivalence between this limit definition and a single variable composite function that comes from the surface f of x comma y. And we can use the multivariable chain rule to have an equivalent version of this limit. That results in what we call the dot product formula for the directional derivative. And the formal statement of that theorem is given at the bottom of this screen. The compression of this idea is that the directional derivative is given as a dot product between the gradient and the unit vector u. Let's switch back to our example and we'll use these ideas to actually find the slopes of tangent lines in given directions. Here we're going to try to find the directional derivative with uh, respect to a direction u of the function f at 3, comma 2. By theorem 12.10 on page 1918 uh, of our textbook, we know that any at any point a, comma b, and for any unit vector u, which has coordinates u1, comma u2, we have that the directional derivative of the function f with respect to the direction u evaluated at the point a, comma b will be given by the vector created by taking the partial derivative of f with respect to x evaluating at the point a, b, partial derivative of f with respect to y evaluated at the point a, b, and then dotting that vector with the unit vector u1, comma, u2. This thing right here was known as the gradient of f. It's a vector valued output. So here we would take the gradient of the function f evaluated at a, b. This is the derivative, full derivative and multivariable. And then this was the vector u. We have to check that this is a unit vector. But before we do that, let's go ahead and just find the gradient for the given function in this example. 
The first thing we'll do is we'll cal calculate the partial derivative of the function f with respect to x. And the function f was 1 fourth outside of x squared plus 2 y squared. And then we added 2 to that, so it's an upward shift. Uh, the derivative of 2 with respect to x is 0. And then here we have this um, partial derivative of 1 fourth x squared. And perhaps I'm going to go ahead and distribute that. So now this would be the partial derivative of, it uh, looks like 1 half y squared, because 1 fourth times 2 is 1 half. Um, this thing, I'm going to pull the 2 down. So this would be 2x divided by 4. And then since we're taking the partial derivative of y squared with respect to x, that gets 0. And I scale 0 by a half, and I still get 0. And of course, this is 1 half x. Okay, same. We'll do the same process here. I'm going to skip the steps on this one, and I'll let the reader confirm this for themselves. If I take, uh, excuse me, the viewer, <laughs> forgot what medium I was in. So here we let this uh, be f of x y. We take this derivative, and I can see immediately that this is probably be uh, just y. Please confirm that to yourself. Which means when I take the gradient of this sucker. And by sucker, I mean the function f. So the gradient of f evaluated at the input point, which we said was going to be 3, 2. Well, again, the gradient is a vector. So the output is going to be f sub x at 3, 2, and then f sub y at 3, 2. But both of these are quite easy to calculate. In particular, this is going to be a 3 divided by 2, since that was the partial derivative with respect to x. And then this would just be 2. So that's the gradient. Uh, when we go to take the directional derivative, here we said that the directional derivative, first we wanted to do it in terms of u1. Um, I would always check that the direction that I'm given is actually a unit vector. If it's not, I have to normalize it. So here uh, we said that u1 was going to be um, 1 over square root of 2 comma 1 over square root of 2. And when I take the square of each of those and add them, which would be the square of the 2 norm, I get 1 half plus 1 half, which is indeed 1. So this is a unit vector. So here I would get 3 comma 2 comma 3 over 2 comma 2 dotted with the vector u, which is just 3 over 2 comma 2 dotted with the vector 1 over square roots of 2, 1 over square root of 2. So this would be 3 over 2 square roots of 2 plus 2 over square root of 2. And then if we were really excited about life and math, we could find a common denominator. So this would be something like 3 plus 4 divided by the square root of 2 times 2. And then, of course, 3 plus 4, the hardest problem that we solved so, so far would be 7. And remember, this is going to be the slope of a tangent line at this point, where the tangent line is constructed by taking a secant line in this direction. I think we'll go over and switch into Mathematica to make sure that we can visualize this. Before we do that, let's go ahead and find the directional derivative of this function with respect to a different direction. So here, we would say this is going to be 3 over 2 comma 2 dotted with the different direction, which we're going to call uh, 1 half. And then what was this? Square root of 3 divided by 2. And of course, this is going to be 3 over 4 plus square roots of 3. And we could go ahead and look at this as 3 plus Um, what would this be? Like those would cancel out. So this would be 3 over 4 plus 4 square roots of 3 over 4, which I suppose would be 3 plus 4 square roots of 3 divided by 4. Let's switch over to Mathematica and view both of these directional derivatives as the slope of the appropriate tangent line. Bam! Here we are in Mathematica. We're going to go ahead and graph the surface that we were talking about in this example. 
And then we'll also actually visualize both directional derivatives in different colors as parametric um, equations, aka the slope of a line. So here we go. We're going to take the, um, let's see here. So we're going to have that this be 1 fourth times, I think we said that this was x squared plus 2y, oh, y squared, there we go. And then we're going to raise it up 2. Um, and then here we want to say that we have two things going on here. We are going to have our, our a point be um, 3 and our b value for the point that we're looking at was 2. And then we had two different directions. One of the directions we called, uh, I can actually code that into the stuff that we do later. So let's go ahead and plot this thing. So here we go, plot 3D. And then we go ahead and end the plot 3D command just to make sure that we know what we're doing with our um, brackets. So here we're going to plot this thing. And we're going to go ahead and specify the domain on which we're going to plot it. So I think negative 4 to 4 looks pretty good just because that can actually has the point that I want. Maybe I'll go negative 5 to 5. And then I'll do the same thing in Y, so uh, negative 5 to 5. Uh, formally speaking, this is all I need to plot this. So Mathematica will automatically calculate the values of this thing. Um, x squared when x is 5 is going to be 25. 25 divided by 4 is going to be something like 6.25. Um, so I could go up to 8 because 8 squared would be 64. 64 divided by 4 is going to be 16. And that would help me um, choose my plot range. So here, if I don't want Mathematica to choose the range for me, I can specify it. And in this case, I'm going to go from 0, uh, I think I said to 16. Okay, So there's the elliptic paraboloid. And we notice that the x semi-axis and y semi-axis are different. We also notice that Mathematica is doing a bunch of op options um, from its own, uh, what do they call these, default options. So the clipping style default is going to be on, so I'd like to turn it off. Uh, we also know that the mesh default is on, so I like to turn it off. And then we know that the plot style is this whatever, I don't even know what color this is, uh, puke yellow. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help that. Um, it comes from having a 16 month old. So here we go. Uh, let's call this thing, um, I don't know, blue. And then we'll go opacity 0.4. OK, so now I've got that elliptic paraboloid. Let's go ahead and visualize the point at which we're going to take this directional derivative. To visualize this point, we're going to want to actually combine two graphics together. So of course, we're going to use the show command. We're getting quite good at this by this point. Let's go ahead and end the show command here. Show command, here we go. And then we'll do a graphics 3D. Um, and we'll do a point here. So here we'll do point size. And we'll have 0 0.005, I think it was. And then here we'll do the point. So we're going to do the point on the surface that comes from evaluating f at 3, 2. So here we're going to go 3, 2. Uh, what, is it, what are you complaining about, Mathematica? Oh, it's complaining about the fact that I haven't written this point as a um, a list. There we go. Uh, that is way too small. You can't even see that thing. So there's my point that I want to expand this thing about. Um, I'm going to go ahead and graph the images of this point on the xy plane. Again, I get really kind of scared when I do this because, uh, yeah. So Mathematica is cutting off half that point because of my range. So if I drop down to negative one, I should get the whole point. Uh, this is not the point A comma B. This is the image of that point in the XY plane. So it's A comma B comma zero. You got to make sure to, to kind of do this. And then what we'll do is let's go ahead and graph the line that comes from this. And remember that we're going to have, um, so we'll call this thing P, uh, maybe we call it PU1. <laughs> we'll call it PU10. And this is going to be an ordered triplet. It's going to be 
uh, 3 comma 2 comma 0. So that would be the first point that we're going to go. And then we're going to look at PU1, which will be come from uh, moving along U1. And it will come from moving, uh, I don't know, H units along U1, I think we said it was, right? So this is going to be 1 over the square root of 2. This is going to be U1, of course, right? And then this would be plus H times 1 divided by the square root of 2. Um, and let's define h to be something like, I don't, I think we said it was going to be 1. That's what we used last time. So now we're going to go ahead and graph the line that comes from moving along this. And we'll do these all in the same color. So maybe this color scheme we'll do red. So here we're going to look at red. And then, oh sugar, what did I do? Uh, here. We'll go ahead and say that this is red. Instead of uh, point size, this is going to go down to thickness. And the thickness, I think, was 0 0.008. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to connect these two. We're going to look at a line through this point, And we'll go, uh, the line goes from PU1 not to PU1. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay, That's not quite long enough. So let's go out to like 4 and see what happens there. Okay, So now that's the derivative that we want to take. So we want to take it in that direction. So when we slap a tangent line into this thing, um, the tangent line is going to look like, what is it going to look like? Well, I kind of already know that if I want to do a parametric equation, so parametric plot 3D, that's the curve that I use. And then we'll go end parametric plot 3D command. This one's kind of interesting. So the direction of my uh, parametric plot is going to be in the direction of u. So we'll go t times um, 1 divided by square root of 2. And then here we're going to have the same direction but a different starting point. And then this is where it gets really interesting. For these changes in x, the question is, what's the change in y? And we actually know the change in y. Um, and we also know the point. The point that this is going to be expanded around is going to be three f of 3, comma 2. And then we know that the uh, slope in the z direction, we calculated as 7 divided by 2 square roots of 2. So here is the amount that we change in x. Here's the amount that you change in y. And then if we change that amount, we get this slope in the z direction. Of course, at t equals 0, we're going to get um, just the line through the point. So we might go from like negative 2 to 2 in the t. And then here, we're going to do plot style. And we'll use the same. Um, command up here. I think we said that this was going to be red. And then we wanted thickness here. So perhaps we go 0 0.04. OK. You see it? That is now the tangent line to that curve that comes from projecting. Uh, that's really interesting. Did I do something off there? There it is. <laughs> so if I go right under, this is kind of interesting. If I line those up, you see that? That's really exciting, isn't it? I'm just projecting that line onto it. So now I can go ahead and delete all of this stuff. This was all used um, in the background. Oh, I don't think I want to delete all that. I want to delete everything that's not the point. So here, this is the point that we're taking the tangent line at. And then there's the tangent line. And what I want to do now is I'd like to show the other um, directional derivative. And the way that I'm going to do this is just change this to be the other direction. So I think the other direction was 1 half. This was going to be square root of 3 divided by 2. And then we saw that the 
this directional derivative um, was going to be, do you remember what it was? I think it was like um, on top, it was something like 3 plus 4 uh, square roots, oh, sugar, square roots of 3. And on the bottom, it had to do with like, uh, what was this, 4? And then maybe we do this one in blue. Uh, no, green maybe. Notice that um, this is a different tangent line to the surface. If you, these things are both completely tangent to the surface. They only touch once, but they're tangent lines in different directions. And I, what I want to show you is that we could actually also visualize on this the um, directional derivative of. Oh yeah, I don't think I'm gonna do this in this video. I was gonna show you how to do the directional derivatives with respect to the standard directions. Yeah, but there you go. Those are a visual of the two different tangent lines that we're graphing. The numbers that we got in our example were the slopes of those lines. And when you say slope, we mean the change in y, excuse me, the change in z over the run of the function. If you want an interpretation, go back to the second video in lesson 11. This is quite beautiful. I hope that after watching this video, your socks have been knocked off. In the next video, we'll take a look at a different example of how to calculate directional derivatives. See you there.